everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Now we done by Disney, or Lucas Lucasfilm, whichever way you slice it. Legends. This is amazing. Um, this might be my top 20. I mean, I haven't read everything. Maybe I'll even bump it up to a top 10. I, I don't know. The biggest travesty is that nobody talks about it. I looked all over YouTube and the internet. I mean, you have the forums. You have a couple YouTube videos. And I mean, like, maybe four on this book. But it does not get the love it so rightly deserves. This book is fantastic. This book is Shadow Games, written by friggin' right here. If I get the... You know him, you love him. Usually. Michael Reeves. Where was this quality? Where was this excellence in the second half of the Coruscant Knights series? Because uh, Coruscant Knights, book three, eh. Uh, the Last Jedi, eh. But this, this was, this was better than the good Coruscant Knights books. Um, honestly, even better than, than Darth Maul Shadowhunter, in my opinion. The only thing that this has not trumped for me is MedStar. I really enjoyed MedStar. But that also got two books. This is a single book. It's so good. It's so good. I love this book. This book, okay. So here's another thing. Here's here's another wonderful thing about Shadow Games. We focus on Dash Rendar. You know, the character from Shadows of the Empire. And if you don't know what Shadows of the Empire is, well, where have you been? <laughs> Shadows of the Empire is a multimedia project. It was a comic. It was a video game. It was a novel that came out. Um, it was meant to take place in between episode 5 and 6. And George Lucas approved of it. Said if he had, if he had went back and done it, he probably would have made like a 5.5 movie revolving around the plot of Shadows of the Empire. But, you know, Han was frozen in carbonite, so they need they basically needed a replacement for Han Solo, so they came up with Dash Rendar. Now, they even acknowledge that kind of in this book, in the sense that, yeah, Dash Rendar kind of is just a Han Solo stand-in, but they do something with it. You know, it's more like, yeah, I am a stand-in, but I don't want to be. Um, and, and, they, and they do make him fairly different enough in this book. In fact, there are several scenes with Dash Rendar himself and Han Solo, which kind of contrast their kind of differences, um, but also a lot of similarities. Um, and, and every scene between um, Han Solo and Dash Rendar is absolute gold. But oh my god, the, sorry, the, I'm gushing. But the writing in this book is so freaking excellent, and I'm like... It's almost as if somebody like hijacked, like like a like a invasion of the body snatchers scenario, where somebody took over his body in the last two books of Course on Nights, which were just utter garbage. But this was just every interaction, every bit of dialogue. It's all written so well, and it's also just an excellent thriller novel. Basically, um, Dash Rendar. And his and his crewmates, which are all excellent, by the way, Lebo and Eden, and they pull this crazy stunt earlier in the book, trying to to outdo Han on the Kessel Run, which that that's the thing. Dash, Han Solo very similar, but Han Solo kind of just is able to do things like he just has so much luck on his side, whereas. Dash kind of has to work really hard to be even in the same kind of league as Han Solo. Not that Han Solo doesn't work hard, but things just seem to come to him. It's as if the Force is with him, guiding him, even if he doesn't acknowledge the Force. But everything seems to always end up going Han's way, right? There's a whole lot of luck on, on Han Solo's side, whereas it, it feels like Dash has to put in more of the effort because he's more of an everyday man, you know? But anyway, they, they botched their thing. They need to get some shipments sent over somewhere else, but their ship is broken down, the Outrider. So he asks, reluctantly, very reluctantly, for Han Solo to go, to go do that. While they're stuck on Tatooine at this point. Also, it's weird about the placement of this book. I think if you were doing anal chronological order, which I will do next time I read it, because I, I know now, but I didn't when I was going through these books, because I knew nothing about it. But, sorry, I'm talking really fast. It happens when I'm really excited about something. Okay. Um, but it seems to be that most of the Rebel Dawn book by A.C. Crispin would happen 
up until that like last chapter where he's on Tatooine with Chewie, which leads in episode four. Um, so it'd be like all of Rebel Dawn, stop this book, continue onward with Rebel Dawn is kind of how it seems. Um, but around this time period, as we're reaching closer and closer to episode four, things are kind of being jumbling together. So it's hard to get an exact estimate on how to read these things. Um, if you're anal like me, so I'm trying my best, but, um, but anyway, so he ends up, Dash Rendar ends up meeting, um, this actress or this performer, um, who's being followed by a stalker, but is she, or is there intrigue upon intrigue upon intrigue going on here? As I said, this is actually an excellent thriller novel. Um, and so, the adventure ensues. I don't really want to spoil anything too much. I do have a couple things to say, but I think the benefit of me reading this is that I knew basically nothing about this novel except that Dash Rendar had a starring role. And because I knew nothing about this novel, it helped enhance it immensely. This book was so much fun. It's it's some of the best writing that Michael Reeves has done in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, in my opinion. And, and it's such a crying shame that no one talks about it as much. And I don't know why, because this book was splendid. I read through this book so fast. I have, this is one of the few novels, because every novel has at least a certain part where I'm kind of like, all right, all right, let's, let's keep going. Especially during the action scenes, because as I've said before in multiple videos, I'm not much of an action guy. Like, I like action in the comics because I can see it, but I'm not much of a visualizer for action. There's only a few writers that have managed to pull me in uh, in a novel with action. One of them being Drew Carpishan with the Darth Bane novels. I thought he did an excellent job of keeping me engaged. Um, when Stover tries, I think he's decent at it. He kind of failed hard, though, at Shatterpoint. I did not give a single frick during any battle scene. Um, so I kind of just drudged through it to get to the dialogue portion. Um, but this book has action. I mean, it's not extreme amounts of action, but when it comes, I was engaged enough because I thought that Michael Reeves did a good job with the writing um, to make me care enough about the action, uh, which, I mean, that's more of a me problem, but it says a lot that you can get someone like me to actually enjoy that. So, um, but yeah, some of the characters we have, we have Dash Rendar, we have Lebo, who's also another fantastic droid. I don't know if I would put him in a top 10. I'd have to see the rest of the expanded universe again, but Lebo's pretty freaking funny. Joel O'Harn, which is the, uh, the actress, but is she an actress? What is she actually? Who knows? Intrigue, intrigue, intrigue. Um, Eden, of course, which is a Natalonian, Natalonian being, um, the same race as Kit Fisto. That's another thing I'll talk about, um, in spoilers, those who don't know. Um, but yeah, I thought just absolutely a splendid novel. Like, is it a big end of the world scenario book? No, it's a little story, um, about protecting some people for some black sun Vigos. I'll say that much because it is, of course, revolving around Dash Rendar, uh, and the only other novel he's company in is revolving around Black Sun. So it makes sense to kind of have them, at least in some way, shape, or form, be involved here. Um, but yeah, this was an excellent... Uh, it, it gave me some good characterization for Dash Rendar. If you felt like he was just a Han Solo knockoff, I feel like this book does him justice and sets him apart. From Han Solo because this was written pretty late into it so they they got away to be like yeah he was intended to basically just be a replacement because it was in between episode five and six but he could be so much more and I really appreciate that the only downside I mean it might be positive for some people is that this was one of the later written books in the EU before it got discontinued so we do have mentions of like Christoph Christophsis which is that planet from the 2007 Clone Wars movie, which chronologically within the show takes place a little bit later, but that's the planet where they're fighting on in the Clone Wars, the very in that first movie where, where Anakin gets introduced to Ahsoka. So that's something for people who enjoy TCW. That is a thing in this book, which is, you know, a nice little reference, I guess, and it's interesting to see Han, of all people, go to a place like that because you associate that with 08 Clone Wars. You don't think original trilogy characters ever heading to a planet like that but you know it's not blasted out there's no droids 
the Clone Wars have long been over. So it's it's uh, pristine Christophsis. Um, also, I also love just the fact that they kind of use an idea from uh, one of the adventure journals or insiders, I forget which, to do this story. And I don't want to get into it, but in spoilers, th there is a story. I I'll talk about it, I guess, in spoilers. Sorry. But it was, it was really cool to kind of bring that back in a sense. So overall, guys, I think absolutely fantastic novel. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It was, even if you have not read Shadows of the Empire, I think you will still enjoy this book. Do I think you get more out of it if you've read Shadows of the Empire? Probably, because then you already know about Dash Rendar. You already know about Prince Caesar. You already know about Black Sun. But at the same time, I could see you really falling in love with Dash Rendar's character here. And then being really surprised three years down the line chronologically when you see him again in Shadows of the Empire. But either way, highly recommend it. I'm getting into spoilers now. Not too many. But if you don't want any sort of spoilers really for this book, then please be my guest. Leave and go read it now. Alrighty, guys. Not too much. I have to head, get head into work soon. So, um, I already mentioned Han and Dash. Um, I really only have one thing. Or a couple. So, we find out that the actress lady is a, a, a rebel agent. Which, as I said, in there was a short story I read before where we had like um, a guitarist or something. A band player that was being a secret informant for uh, the rebellion. Working in Imperial places. So we have a similar thing here where she's a performer and she's she relays information and such. So I thought that was a really cool twist. Um, to the story, or in a nice, not ripping it off exactly, because it is slightly different, but being the same sort of premise as that short story, but put in novel form, which I thought was neat, because not everybody reads the short stories, obviously. Um, uh, the Natalonian guy, uh, Ethan, Ethan, um, however the fudge I say his name, um, he's a part of this secret, not secret sect, but he's a part of this sect that didn't train in the force but it was a bunch of force sensitives that learned like martial arts or something like that and the leader of that was kit fisto's brother so i thought that was a cool connection to even learn that kit fisto had a brother and we don't know much about kit fisto because the clone wars didn't really get into it that was one of the biggest i think um disappointments of the of the eu um, and I, I mean, not that Disney's done any better. I don't think they've done that many stories with Kit Fisto, but uh, it's a character that doesn't get much love. So it was, it was interesting to learn that about him. And it's interesting to learn that even if you were not a Jedi, if you were even force sensitive and were a relatively well-known like little order, Palpatine put you down because it, we, we learned that Kit Fisto's brother protected or, or tried to protect his followers. And that's why we have this one guy serving with Dash Rendar. So... I thought that was really cool. Um, but like I said, excellent thriller though. Throughout, we get bits and pieces of information. We're learning more and more, second guessing ourselves. It's thoroughly engaging and it's funny throughout. And it's it's an absolutely splendid, splendid novel. I guess that was really my two biggest spoilers, I guess. I didn't write that much down. I'm, I've am i been really bad at taking notes lately, guys. I'm sorry. I, I've been trying. I just... I. I'm only trying to write stuff down if I think it's really significant to either the overall universe or to the story itself. And, um, I don't know. So that is basically it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Sharing ups at a ton. And up next is really confusing. We have a bunch of stuff that is coming. Now, technically, most of the Han Solo novel, the last one, happens before all the comics that I'm going to be reviewing. But at the same time, the ending ends where episode 4 begins. So do I put that later or earlier? I don't know. But we have some comics with Leia and stuff which take place like a week before episode 4. So it's all a bunch of confusing jumbleness. And it's only going to get worse when we get to the Rebellion era. Which is the three years in between episode 4 and 5. So I would hope you will bear with me. And until then, guys... May the force be with you.